Hi, I'm Jared Gardner, and this is 5-Minute Pathology Pearls. In today's 5-Minute video, we're going to talk about a tricky and curious phenomenon that happens with mast cells. Mast cells have this weird ability to uh, non-specifically stain with a variety of different immunostains. Now, I, I've heard different explanations for why this happens, and none of them totally satisfy me. Um, you're welcome to, to, to post your opinions in the comment section down below. But in any case, for whatever reason it happens, um, it's really a good thing to know about. And I feel like the, even though it's been described for a long time, that a lot of pathologists are not really familiar with this happening. And I think part of the reason is that it doesn't always happen, and when it happens, it's not always um, it's not always uh, uniform. Sometimes uh, certain stains have a tendency to do it, but they don't always do it in every case. So this is an example of an anastomosing hemangioma, and I've got another video that covers this entity um, and this case actually in detail, and I'll put a link in the video description. But the reason that I'm using this is because um, uh, anastomosing hemangioma has a tendency to have scattered mast cells throughout the lesion. And you can see the mast cells here highlighted, and you might think this is a CK um, or a tryptase stain, but no, this is a uh, pancytokeratin stain. So why on earth are mast cells labeling with pancytokeratin? They, they clearly don't make keratin um, uh, filaments, but they label with the stain. So let me get closer here to show you the way that the, you can tell they're mast cells. You can see that the nuclei are negative and that the cells have kind of a fried egg sort of shape, like this little guy down here. And it's a little hard to pick up on video, but there's a granularity. You can see that it's the granules usually that are picking up the stain. So the staining is usually kind of granular. And it's a little bit tricky to get on the video, but you can tell that's a mast cell right there. The other way that you can tell and recognize right away that this is probably mast cell um, non-specific staining is look at how evenly scattered. You have single cells, there are no nests or clustered, and they're evenly scattered, even from low power. Look at how evenly scattered they are throughout the tissue. So if you see that in the dermis or in a lymph node, and you're like, wow, what are all these scattered cells staining with Desmin or pancytokeratin? They're probably mast cells. Now you can go look at the H&E, and usually you can see them on the H&E, or if you really needed to, you could do a mast cell stain, although in all all honesty, you don't really need to do that usually. You can usually easily tell that these are mast cells. So this case is particularly striking, and that's why I'm using it for this video. Usually the staining is a lot weaker than what I just showed you, but here's, here's the example from that same, the H&E of that same uh, anastomosing hemangioma I just showed you, and just to, to give you proof that these are really mast cells, see? That little guy in the middle, a little fried egg with uh, blue granules. And there's another one up here, and there's another one down here. So it's really interesting to me that this happens. The stains I particularly see this phenomenon occur with, most often at least, is pancytokeratin uh, AE1, AE3. And I, it may happen with other pancaritins, but that's the pancaritin I use uh, most of the time. And I also see it with Desmin, uh, MART1, or Melon A. Um, and myogenin, and particularly with myogenin, it's a problem because myogenin is a nuclear stain that we use to detect rhabdomyosarcoma. And the, uh, these, when the entire cytoplasm is staining like this from low power, even from here, you could imagine that these are big nuclei staining. You could think because it's such a round shape, you could think this is nuclear staining. So on a myogenin um, staining mast cells in the middle of a tumor, you could mistake that from, if you didn't look closely, for focal nuclear positivity and, and mistakenly think something was a rhabdomyosarcoma. Obviously not in, in this case, because it's a, clearly a vascular lesion. But the point is, is to keep in mind that some of those stains do that. So it, the MART1 uh, issue is problematic because it sometimes can mimic focal invasion of the dermis in melanomas. If you're looking for melanoma invasive underneath an in situ melanoma, um, that mark can be problematic if it's staining the mast cells. I think the helpful thing there is looking in the deeper dermis and seeing that it's happening throughout the tissue, even away from the melanoma in situ. And also in lymph nodes, if you're using MART1 to look at sentinel lymph nodes for melanoma, when you have even scattered single cells throughout the node, always keep in mind, could these be mast cells? Now just for comparison, let me show you a Desmond on this same case. Here's Desmond staining the smooth muscle in vessel walls around the periphery of the lesion. And look, even though all the mast cells are still here, they're not, they're, there's not that dramatic staining that we saw on the keratin. So I don't know why that is. There is some staining, but it's much more focal and much more weak. And this is more typical of what I usually see. The keratin was a great example of how dramatic it can be sometimes, but this is the more, the more common uh, pattern that I see when I see um, 
mast cell non-specific staining. And so here again is Desmond. The little spindle guys in the background probably are some myofibroblasts. Sometimes they can express a little Desmond. And then these scattered cells there, 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 and up here. Those are the mast cells. And you can see nicely the fried egg shape here. It looks like a little fried egg perfectly. And it's got weak cytoplasmic staining. So admittedly, when it looks like this, most people would see that. They may not know what it is, but they'd say, well, that's not specific staining. But next time you see it, you'll know that you're dealing with mast cells. So I just wanted to share that with you to remember that mast cells have this weird ability to stain with things. Even though they're not truly, I think, making those proteins, they, for some reason, sometimes pick up certain immunostains. And there may be others. If you if you have others that you uh, other stains you've seen, um, stain on mast cells uh, non-specifically, please uh, put a comment down below because I'm always curious to learn more about this phenomenon. So thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet to be uh, notified of new videos and click like uh, down below.